It's time to strap in for another edition of the Cars Guide podcast, the show that takes you beyond the test drive. This is episode number 236, uh, the, best, the best Chinese cars that are not available in Australia. I'm Cars Guide Deputy Editor James Cleary, and joining me today to look at these uh, particular vehicles are Andrew Chesterton, valued contributor. Hello, Live World. And our news editor, Tung Nguyen. Hello, everyone. <laughs> we will also look at the fresh metal we've been driving this week and unearth the comment of the week, not to mention being on standby to respond to feedback coming in via YouTube because we are live streaming. Once again, YouTubers jump in the comments and get involved as we go. So let's go with this week's show, uh, the cars from China that we need. We've already got lots of Chinese brands and models in the Aussie market. MG is a regular top 10 player now. Mm -hmm. uh, GWM Havel, LDV, um, Cherry is possibly making a return. But that is the tip of an immense iceberg, I think, as we all know. And Chesto, in 2022, you've emerged as Cars Guide's resident China expert. Yes. And we've, we've taken your lead in identifying the cars we think should be or, or could be welcomed by local uh, consumers. Yep. The plan is to work around the group and cover each one. So, Chesto, let's get going. You first up. What's the first Chinese gem that we are missing out on? Well, well, first, I'll just give a little bit of a wrap to the Chinese market, if that's okay. One of the things I love about Chinese cars and why I've sort of become the resident Chinese car expert is the industry over there moves super quickly. Like there, there is always something new to discover. They're not afraid to push the boundaries. They're always rolling out something with an awesome name like a King Kong or a big dog or something. <laughs> yeah. uh, we've just, we're about to get BYD, which is a gigantic uh, EV company in Australia. So the, the relevance to our market Market is getting bigger and bigger and bigger but also yep. they're just doing cool and exciting stuff so and we've chosen some of those to talk through today so I, i'm going to kick it off with it with a couple of cars that are actually very likely to come to australia the, the first one is the great wall tank 400 now great wall motors has been on a bit of a trademarking spree in australia they've trademarked the name tank and about you know a hundred other iterations of it for our market yep. Yep. And they, they've had vehicles out over here for evaluation purposes. They've suggested it will come without saying when. So this is not a pie in the sky car. This one is coming. And it's kind of, I guess, a, a Chinese answer to a vehicle like the LC200 or even the Prado. It yep. rides on the same size wheelbase as the LC200 at 2,850 millimetres. It gets a, a new 3-litre turbocharged V6 to be good for 260 kilowatts and 500 newton meters. It gets a fast and modern and fast shifting nine speed automatic gearbox. Uh, and it's supposed to be a combination of kind of on-road comfort and off-road capability. So you can expect yeah, the, things like- the, the, name, the name tank is a double-edged sword, is it not? <laughs> it I mean, is. you've got uh, connotations of strength, uh, but also in the Australian vernacular, it's not exactly a positive. No, and look, to be honest, they've got, I mean, they've, they've got a bit of form in that department, don't they? They've got a, you know, there's the, the, the platform is, uh, there's a platform over there called the Lemon Platform, uh, which is never a good sign. The Ute, of course, was called the Cannon. This thing's called the Tank. So they've got some curious naming going yep. on over there. But if you can step past that, uh, I think they might be onto something with this. Proper four-wheel drive capability, front and rear diff locks, huge amount of tech, on-road sort of comfort, off-road capability, and it will actually almost certainly come to Australia at some point in the not-too-distant future. So that is one to look forward to. Good. Excellent. Thank you. What a great way to start. Tung, we will move on to you. Next up, what is your first cab off the rank, please? Yes, yes. Well, I've got on my list here, uh, the first one is uh, the Lincoln Co. 03 Cyan. Awesome. Okay, thing. so for those that don't know, you know, Lincoln Co., they're owned by Geely. Um, so, you know, it's the same parent company that owns Volvo um, and Polestar. Mm -hmm. uh, like, the, it, this car is actually built on the same platform as a Polestar 2, uh, Volvo C40 as well. Um, this concept car, okay, they they designed it. So Polestar turned from uh, Volvo's performance division uh, mm -hmm. and was spun off to its own all-electric uh, brand. So Cyan has now stepped in to be sort of the, the performance division for Lincoln Co. Yeah. Um, they've taken the, the 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 three, the zero three, however you want to pronounce it, uh, this sort of like high-riding almost um, crossover-like sedan, and just made it way more sporty. So it's got a two-liter four-cylinder turbo petrol engine. It's 393 kilowatts. Uh, and power is fed yeah. to the front wheels through a six-speed sequential 
gearbox um, and it lapped the Nürburgring, made a record, um, both as a front-wheel drive and a four-door car, beating uh, Renault Megane, Trophy R, and Jaguar XE SV Project 8. So it's definitely got, uh, you know, its performance chops. And since that concept car was revealed, Lincoln Co. have actually put out, um, you know, a production variant of that yeah. car. doesn't quite make as much power, um, but it's definitely at the levels of sort of like Golf GTI. You can get that car out in China, can't get well, it. Well, interesting because the, the, the pictures that were issued by Lincoln Co., there was just a little glimmer of air under all four tires on mm -hmm. what looked to be the Nürburgring. So that was quite interesting. And for those with any history in uh, printing and publishing, cyan, of course, the car is blue. So we'll see if, uh, <laughs> if, that's, <laughs> if that's the only colour that they uh, they offer it in. Um, yeah. that, that's fantastic. Okay, now I would like to join the fray here and start off with the Honky S9. Now, this car is essentially ridiculous. Chester, you've, you've put this one up. It, it is extraordinary. Whether it ever comes to Australia, whether it ever goes to a market outside of China, I suppose it, it's uh, possible, even likely for some. 1,044 kilowatts. Yep. It's a plug-in petrol-electric hybrid hypercar, rival for the Mercedes-AMG One, which has only just started to be delivered uh, to customers, I believe. Mm -hmm. A Silk FAW vehicle, and it will be built in Italy. So Silk EV is an uh, Italian-American engineering and design firm. Um, it's a four-litre V8 engine and three electric motors. And Honky quotes 0 to 100 Ks in 1.9 seconds and a top speed of a lazy 400 kilometres yeah. an hour. It's, <laughs> it's ridiculous. But JC, it's got some, it's really interesting. It's got American fingerprints. It's got Italian fingerprints. It's got Chinese fingerprints. It's going to be built, I believe, in Emilia, Reggio Emilia, which is like the next town up basically from where they, where they build things like Maseratis and Ferraris and mm. those kind of things. It's in sure. that Emilia Romagna region of Italy. Yeah. Yep. So mate, it's got, it's got some potential. Again, whether we see it remains to be seen, but whew, what a beast. What an amazing car. All right. Yeah. That's brilliant. We are on a roll. And Chester, we're back to you for your what? next contender please i'm going to bring you straight back down to earth but, uh, <laughs> with a car that i think again is very likely to arrive in australia so this is possibly the coolest named car ever the havel big dog yeah. <laughs> known as both the dargo or the big dog in australia they've registered the name dargo so they haven't gone for the big dog despite the fact the big dog is such a wonderful Australianism. Would, think, it, yeah, would, yeah. would a mashup of Dargo and Big Dog almost be Dagwood Dog? <laughs> <laughs> the big dog, the big, dog, big da the big Dargo dog. <laughs> yeah. I like it, but I think they missed the trick there. Not calling it <laughs> anyway. Um, I, I, it's a uh, again an off-road kind of focused SUV. It really dials up that potential. It's got a Borg Warner four-wheel drive system. Drive modes that cover things like sand, snow, off-road screens that give you a bird's eye view, and also the ground beneath each of the wheels, so you know where you get where you're going. Yep. Uh, Two-liter turbocharged petrol engine, 155 kilowatts, 325 newton meters. Of course, sent to all four wheels via a seven-speed dual clutch. And there's supposed to be a new diesel motor coming to 135 kilowatts and 480 newton meters. Yep. It is not, however, a ladder frame. It's a it's a it rides on more traditional SUV underpinnings. But again, the focus here is off road capability. Where the big dog can't go, you don't want to go. Well, look if the <laughs> if the de, if the defender can do it, um, others can do it. You know, uh, moving from a ladder body on frame type chassis to a unibody. Mm. Yeah, let's see. Let's see. Yeah, That's yeah. great. You'd expect the price to be pretty competitive and pretty good and something like that as well, right? Yeah, I mean, look, you'd have to think so. When with, with Toyota's uh, prices only really going upwards, even for used cars mm. now, it really does actually create a, an area in the market for a more affordable off-road beast, provided it can do what it says on the tin. Good I point. believe in the big dog, put it that way. Okay, <laughs> all right, fantastic. Who yeah, let the dog? Oh, I can, you, the, the marketing campaign writes itself, right? <laughs> who, let the big uh, who let the big dogs out? Okay. Um, now, Tung, we're back around to you. Second one for your good self, please. So to continue that sort of off-road theme, uh, on my list here, I've got uh, the Great Wall. It's got two names. It's the Great Wall Dragon Bullet or the Baja Snake. And, you know, it sounds <laughs> crazy. It sounds out there, like Chester alluded to, these Chinese cars are often branded with wild, wild names. Yeah. But this is a car that's built in partnership with Shelby. And that, that, that other name might sound a bit familiar to, uh, you know, seasoned rev heads around the world. Um, what this car is, it's a ute. So, uh, you know, they've taken the, the Great Wall Cannon, as it's known over there. Um, and in partnership with Shelby, they've developed their own, 
you know, to borrow a very, uh, you know, well-worn phrase now, a Ranger Raptor rival, gotcha. <laughs> so to speak. A triple R. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, so, you know, this car gets Fox off-road shocks. Uh, it's got all-terrain tires. It's got lifted suspension. You know, it's got better ground clearance, better approach departure angles, you know, uh, an up- upgraded four-wheel drive system that works. And it looks absolutely bonkers. They have just, you know thrown everything they can at it it's got it's got two spare wheels just yeah. in case you know you're, you're going yeah. off-roading and, and you get a flat well you would be um, getting some serious air if yeah. the landing isn't as planned you might pop too mm-hmm. so That's yeah. Right. yeah yeah mm-hmm. but the big the big stumbling block i think with this car is its engine uh you know they've actually used the same powertrain as every other cannon in in, uh-huh. um, in china for this car so if that car were ever to come here it'd get a two liter four cylinder turbo petrol good for 120 kilowatts and just 400 newton meters so the, yeah. the bite doesn't quite match its bark there does that's it gotcha gotcha says it all says it all all right so that's fantastic back to me i'm at the geely icon now this one chester you you put it up on the list uh, mainly because it's so pretty. It yeah. is it is a, an amazing uh, looking car, relatively humble under the skin, 1.5 litre turbo engine, 130 kilowatts, 255 newton minutes, so nothing out of the box there. But it does have a 48 volt mild hybrid system and the design uh, you know, ethos is less is better, less is more. Uh, it looks premium and awesome. It borrows a little bit uh, from... I want to say a car we're familiar with, the Hyundai Staria, in the way the headlight has been treated. Yep. Um, and the the instruments, Chester, you might want to pick this one up. They they appear to be behind fabric, which yep. gives it a kind of a warm texture. Tell us a bit more about that. So it's also borrowed a bit from Rangey, I reckon, in the design focus. And and I I kind of put this one in there because I wanted a car that a, a, a real world car that we might all you know not it doesn't have to be a big dog, doesn't have to be a Baja snake. This is the this is the kind of car you could see them getting some real mainstream cut through in. Gotcha. But but the, the part of this sort of less is more pared back design philosophy is this eight bit concept, this old school concept to, to to the design. And so one of the ways they've achieved that is by covering the driver's screen in this kind of felt fabric. Yeah. When you so when once it's on, it shines through the fabric. It kind of manages to dull the screen a little bit. But when it's off, it just looks like an unbroken line of fabric that runs from one end of the dash to the other. The screen effectively disappears. Just something I've never seen before, and I think it, I don't know, I think it's really cool. cool. And if they, I think if they can go eight bit for the entire car. They won't have a semiconductor problem. There'll be no, no need for you know microchips at all. It does. Uh, it's got a bit of Flintstones acceleration. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that's, good. that's good. So, in fact, we okay, that's two down each, and we are back to you, Chester. Number okay. three. Now, this you've got the fastest car of the lot, JC, but I believe I've got the second fastest. This is the Neo EP9. Very good. Which is a, a genuine monster of EV performance. It makes a t- combined 986 kilowatts. Which is- deliver- we we'll go from zero to 100 kilometers an hour in 2.7 seconds. So slow. We're a second slow. <laughs> yeah, slow. But it will hit 207.1 and then 300 in 15.9. And but to be honest, having driven some EVs on the Nurburg, oh, sorry, on the autobahns in the past, I can tell you at 300 you'll be watching the batteries drain. Yes, <laughs> yes, that's right. That's that right. said, it did set a, a new lap record at uh, the Nurburgring ring in 2017. Lapped it in six minutes 45 seconds point nine. It's made by a, a China-based EV startup called Next EV. EV uh, and Neo, of course, is a maker of electric SUVs over there. So this is, I guess, just a case study or a showcase in EV performance, and it is a blistering looking and apparently accelerating thing. It'd be interesting to to experience what it's like inside the noises that it makes. What's what's yep. being mm-hmm. used to support the noise? Because I want to blow my own horn here. I've got horn here. I've got an opinion story running on the weekend about you know um, noise and cars and whether EVs can actually, um, you know, pick that up, uh, particularly. Yeah, nice, nice plug there. Nice plug AMG. There, anyway, look, there you go. Um, all right. So <laughs> we are back to you, Tung. Pick yes. us up with another one. So we've talked about, I've talked about you, you guys have talked about EVs. Let's combine the two. You know, <laughs> China, China is, is great for this sort of thing. You know, um, uh, they are putting out electric utes like left, right, and center. And, right. and the one on this list is the, uh, it's, it's a great wall. Uh, it's the, the Canon EV. Um, now, I'm no, I'm no engineer, but uh, this, this car is powered by apparently the world's first coaxial, coaxial integrated electric dry, electronic drive axle. Don't know what that means. I have no <laughs> idea. Can someone please explain it? Engineers out there, please explain it in the comments for please us. But, um, 
<laughs> oh, basically, look, the, the, basically, the bar for being an engineer in Australia is very low. Right? <laughs> you know, if you've got a set of pliers, a coat hanger, and some gaffer tape, you're in. Please, please. You know what? Any explanation, I will take it. Um, uh, but, you know, the end result is the electric motor produces, it's 150 kilowatts, 300 newton meters, which isn't all that much in, yeah. in you know, the electric car space. Um, but crucially, uh, it's, got a, it's got a driving range, an all-electric driving range of around 400 kilometers. So that's right. still plenty to get you to and from the work site, load up your tools, uh, you know, take them to work, take them home, charge the car, no problem at all. Um, it's available in two sizes, uh, you know, a shorter one and a, a longer version, longer tray version, um, if you need more space, um, you know, and both of them will carry close to a ton. Uh, yep. It's got, you know, vehicle to uh, vehicle to vehicle sort of tech on board. Um, so you can charge things, you know, go to a campsite, go charge your air fryer. Is that what people use at campsites? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah. <laughs> you know other such things but you know great wall is also touting um level four autonomous driving capability so that means hands off eyes off and just let the car do its thing In amazing some, but that'll, that'll have to be there. in certain environments i would imagine oh yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah otherwise chaos would ensue mm -hmm. okay fantastic that's good it makes me think too particularly when it comes to commercial vehicles obviously towing something or putting a load in the tray uh, has its impact on performance mm -hmm. but uh, the battery life too it's almost like you need a laden and unladen uh, range figure, uh, That's right. yep. but, but anyway, we'll see how that transpires over time. Can, I, right. just, can I just say too quickly as well that that is yep. another vehicle that's very likely to come to Australia. In mm -hmm. fact, when Great Wall first started talking about the Canon, they talked about the EV having basically it should have already arrived by now. Yeah, but that's that's definitely on the target list for that company here. So I'm sure, uh, yeah, I'm sure we'll see it in the next next year or so. Got it. Yep. Okay. All right. Well, I'm in with another one uh, where the mar marketing campaign just writes itself. It's called the Way VV7 GT, and it's like Way, no way, Way. No way. It's got, no, there's got to be. <laughs> anyway, you know, if it comes here, um, I'm available for copywriting duty. But it's um, so Way W E Y is the luxury arm of China's Great Wall. Um, so this has been tuned by. You, you, you won't believe it, Brabus um, yeah. out of Germany. That's a, a tuning house that will be familiar to many. Um, and it's the first actual uh, fruit of this cooperation. Mid-size SUV based on the Havel H6. It's a two-litre turbo, 169 kilowatts, nearly 400 newton metres. Um, through the front wheels, seven-speed auto gearbox. And to me, looking at the images, I don't know about you, Chester, it had a hint of Peugeot. It had a, a, a touch of BMW. Um, it, it, and yet it stands on its own. I think it's a pretty uh, attractive looking vehicle um, that would stand up globally, but it, it's obviously taking its cues from some that are already out there. Yep, and, and a focus on performance. And, and Brabus, just I'm sure everyone knows this already, but 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 is a very well known um, German tuning house. They've done a lot of work with Mercedes over the years. Yeah. In fact, the first car I ever reviewed as a professional motoring journalist was a Smart 44 Brabus, which was. Oh, hey. uh, Wow. wow, what a powerhouse that what was. Too. Yeah. Well, yeah. Here's also a fun fact. I've driven a handful of ways in China a few years oh. ago when I worked for uh, you know, a former publication of mine. Okay. Um, couldn't tell you much about the car because I was stuck in bumper to bumper traffic. In <laughs> <Beijing>. <laughs> I see. <laughs> the okay. interior is nice. That's yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, that'll do. All right. Okay. Now we'll do the quick fire round. Um, last one. Let's whip round for one more each. Chesto. Yes. All right. Well, I'm going to start with the BAW BJ212, which is essentially uh, China's answer to, to, to a Willys Jeep, really, not even a Wrangler, oh. Willys Jeep. I mean, it literally looks like something that's just crawled out of 1945. <laughs> uh, it, is, it is basically built for capability over comfort. There's no doubt about that. And it is a low, low US $13,000. An amazing absolute steal oh, over there you get a little two liter uh, petrol engine a, a, a grand total of a whopping 74 kilowatts but again you're not trying to get anywhere fast you're trying to get up and over things and this little old school beast is the car to do it super thank you now tung uh, we were talking about uh, design inspiration uh, out of yes. europe maybe your fourth one fits that bill it certainly does the changang cs85 coupe so you know yeah, just like yeah. yeah it's either it's either you know crazy and out there like dragon <laughs> bullet or just a word and number suit like yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. um so just like you know bmw's x4 mercedes glc coupe and i guess audi's q5 sportback now it's a coupe like suv um you know it's a really similar size to things like rav4 cx5 Hyundai you know, tucson so it's that mid-size suv uh size um 
but with a sloping roof line and a compromised boot space. Um, <laughs> yes, nice. that's very right. hard. A lot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> very hard to find sort of solid uh, boot volume figures. But uh, you know, you can get this car with a two liter turbo petrol, 174 kilowatts, 360 newton meters. Um, and they've just come out with a 1.5 liter turbo petrol version as well. But it's the it's the kind of thing I suppose that could bring that coupe SUV thing mm -hmm. into range for for a lot more people a more affordable kind of uh, yeah. option I suppose absolutely yeah. mainstream alternative you know the the German brands have proven you know it, it can be a very popular body style so yeah. why not bring it to the mainstream good yeah. all right now to end the quick fire round it's one that we actually touched on last week when we were talking about uh, EVs it's the Neo now there's a brand to to keep in mind the ET5. It's basically a Tesla Model 3 Challenger, a five seat, mm. mid-size hatch, very sleek body, um, incredibly high tech cockpit, dual motor, all wheel drive, um, nor to 100, 4.3 seconds. So it's a slug compared to some of the cars we've been talking about you know, <laughs> um, earlier in the podcast, but 700 Newton meters. Uh, you've got a motor up the front, motor at the back. Uh, it's a high strength steel and aluminum hybrid body. It's got an all glass roof, thousand kilometers of range. Um, how about that 150 kilowatt hour battery? So that's another one that would bring that kind of Tesla sophistication potentially to a different price bracket. Let's put it yeah. that way. So um, why on earth can't we have that car? It would be it would be a welcome addition, I would have thought. There's wraps on Neo over there as one of the, you know, one of the the, the up and coming and and very popular brands. So mm. yep. I, you, you would expect if look if BYD succeeds in here in Australia, it would be wouldn't be on beyond the pale to expect more to follow. Yep. I hope people have also got to keep in mind that Tesla Model 3, Model Y, that's built in China and, and yeah. brought over here. So and, you know, and, it's not... and also has worked wonders on its build quality, to be perfectly mm -hmm. honest. The sure. car's never been as good as it was since it's been built in China. Yep. Mm -hmm. Now, um, Tung, you mentioned uh, the, the Brabus uh, that you were driving and the Smart that you were driving, Chester. Mm -hmm. uh, Kelvin Tan reckons the Smart, uh, number one, new electric SUV, should have cracked a mention in our, our cars that mm -hmm. should come here. But uh, anyway, I'm not sure whether that's out of China. It might be. Um, anyway, thank you for that. So now it's time to move from cars that we're talking about in theory, that cars that we're talking about in reality, the <laughs> cars in the garage. Okay, now let's get into it. First of all, Tung, can we start with you? You have been in a Volkswagen, it's fairly compact and practical, but it's got something yep. else up its sleeve. Absolutely. So uh, I've been lucky enough to take uh, the keys to a Golf R wagon oh, uh, cool. this week. So, um, you know, it's I have a Volkswagen Group wagon product in, I, I own a Skoda Octavia RS, the 2015 one. So it was very nice to sort of compare the 2022 Golf R wagon uh, to the Octavia. Um, three things I like about it. The styling on the Golf, the new Golf R is absolutely spot on. It's like sporty, confident. They've paired it back. It looks a lot less uh, sort of boy racer and a little bit more yeah. mature. Yeah. Um, it's kind of like, I don't know, if like I don't know, Adidas made a three-piece tuxedo, you know? It's got that sportiness, but also elegance uh, in equal measure. Got it. Um, and the front lighting especially, I think, is an absolute standout. So they've got this light bar that connects the two uh, headlights now that runs across the bottom of the bonnet. Um, and it just looks futuristic and cool, especially at night. You unlock the car, you walk towards it, you feel like an absolute boss. Yep. Um, <laughs> two, liter, two liter turbo petrol engine uh, like before, but it's 235 kilowatts now. And it gets the full fat 420 newton meters because the wagon gets the petrol particulate filter, whereas the hatchback does not. And the hatchback only has 400 newton meters. Um, you know, fed through uh, all four wheels, seven speed dual clutch automatic, zero to 104.9 seconds. What more could you want out of a small wagon? That's a, plenty of performance. Um, and the practicality is also really good 611 litre boot space, fold the seats down, and that's 1,642 litres. So, IKEA trips, supermarket run, you know, baby pram, you name it. That you're going to put the baby in the in the back there. So that's, <laughs> that's a whoa, I mean, practicality to new heights. Yeah. There's yeah. two things I'd, I'd say there, Tung. I mm -hmm. think you're always like a boss. I don't think it takes a car <laughs> to have you in that mode. Um, second, isn't that connected light bar across the front or a rear of a car such an emerging trend? Yeah. Um, you absolutely. know, when you're looking at the a back of a car and it's got that red light right across, you go, is it a Polestar? Is it a Porsche? 
Is it a, mm. you know, I30N? There, there are... Uh, Havel H6. Havel H6 is obviously <laughs> yep. a bit of a trend. That's fantastic. Totally. Thank you for that totally. tool. Now, Chesto, we'll move over to your side of the fence. What has been residing in your driveway? Less space, less power, but but no less boss. So I've got the uh, <laughs> Toyota Yaris Cross Urban. And I'll take a leaf out of Tung's book. There's, there's three things I, I do really like about it. The, the biggest is at the moment I get to give the middle finger to petrol stations as I drive past. <laughs> they, they reckon 3.8 litres per 100. I, I'm, I'm getting more than that, but it's somewhere in the early fives, but I, I'm not driving it in the most efficient manner either. But it's, it's only got a tiny little fuel tank. It's got a, th- uh, let me double check. It's got a 36 litre fuel tank, which yeah, means yeah. even, mm, that's even tiny. the yeah. numbers are right up there. You can sort of get away from a petrol station for 50 bucks, which feels really good. And you get plenty of Ks out of it as well. So that's one thing I really like about it. The other one is that it, that it drives quite nicely. I, like the, uh, it feels like quite an engaging car to drive. It doesn't have that dead wood feeling of Toyota's gone by. It definitely feels mm. kind of connected. Uh, what don't I like about it? The price. It's uh, 30... Um. About thirty five grand, oh, uh, yeah. thirty four oh, yeah. nine ninety, which is a lot of money for a micro sized SUV. But the worst part about it is it doesn't feel like a thirty five k car. Not not when you're sitting in it, not when you're driving it. it. It's quite. It doesn't feel overly refined. The gearbox drones unbelievably. It's really loud. Like if you're driving on a freeway or, or going somewhere and you've got to keep your foot sort of buried at the quarter or even the halfway mark up a long hill my gosh, don't you know about it? Wow. Um, I, I just can't at this point justify the price tag for that model. Mm. But, I, but but apart from that, it's got a few things that I do really like about it, not least of which I'm not using much fuel. Very good. Okay, that's excellent. Thank you. I will round things out with the Genesis G70 shooting brake. So mm. we're in the just sub 80K bracket here, $79,000. The one I was in, two litre turbo petrol four. And in fact, I think it's only the two-litre turbo in the shooting brake. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. 179 kilowatts, 353 newton meters from 1,450 RPM. So, you know, pretty much from step off. Um, eight-speed auto, rear-wheel drive. Plus side for me is it's beautiful. It is absolutely a beautiful car. They've really uh, nailed it with this one. It's so low. It's 1.4 meters tall. So when you're standing next to the car, it's like, where, where is it? Oh, it's down there. Um, <laughs> Really plush interior, loads of safety, um, pretty pretty sharp response dynamically. It's comfortable, good good highway cruiser. It's had the local suspension tune thing that Hyundai and Genesis do so well. A smooth auto, good ergonomics, and and you do get a decent boot despite the low height overall. The the shooting brake, I mean, that that's pretty good. Um, the minus the, the quilted seats in the car I drove had red stitching, so it's got that diamond pattern quilting and red stitching and red seat belts. That was just a bit, bit too rich for my blood. Yeah. So I'm, I'm splitting hairs here. But, but also there's an engine turning effect on the console. So it's as if they're trying to get all of this old school, you know, upper class kind of stuff and shoving it in there a bit too hard, um, yeah. just, just for my taste. Mm. Um, also, the performance is really good, but there's syn- synthetic engine and exhaust sound. Mm. And I'm, I'm not a fan of that um, at this point. The analogy I like is it's a bit like Mick, Mick Dundee in the bar in New York, you know, when he thinks he's on the good thing and it turns out that she's not really who uh, he thinks she is. Um, you know, once once you know that that uh, synthetic support uh, is, is there, it's, it's not quite the same. Um, to sum up, I, I actually prefer the two-litre turbo to the V6. I find it a bit more nimble wow. and I love a wagon. Um, it's good value. I suppose the only question mark remains the, the Genesis badge. And Genesis says... You know, there are more and more people willing to have a punt and, and experiment with it. So we'll see how that goes over time. But it's a, it's a lovely car to drive. Can I, can I just throw this question out there? What makes it a shooting brake and not a wagon? Yeah. Uh, tradition. A marketing. <laughs> I think it, I, it's marketing. I think it, are you a, is, it a, is it an estate? Yeah. Is it a wagon? Is it a shooting brake? I mean, it should have a slightly swoopy roof line, I think, is the, the accepted kind of Yep. definition you used to chuck your guns in it and go out and blaze away at ducks or pheasants or whatever it was but uh, yeah it's a marketing term I, i'm sure it is a handsome looking thing though isn't it it is it, it's it's super all right now we've had some comments as we've been going along but now it is time for comment of the week oh Great. So comment of the week. Um, we were talking last week 
uh, about um, access denied, EVs we can't buy. And spinning mattingly said, don't worry about the price of petrol. I'm thinking if there were millions of EVs, there simply wouldn't be enough electricity supply. The power is running out recently across the country. And mm. you know, it's a fair call. If we were to snap change to EVs overnight, the grid would not cope. Yeah. Uh, but I suppose with a lot of these, like a lot of these things, it's going to be an organic growth mm. where demand is going to be met with supply over time and those mm. issues will be will be dealt with as we go along that's right um, but it is it is a fair point uh cars are going to add load to to the electricity grid prices are up everybody seems to be talking about it around the water cooler so you know it's a it's a fair point and also the big question about EVs, and I'm a big EV supporter, don't get me wrong, but the big question is it all comes down to where you get your power from. If, if, you, mm. if you're plugging into you know, dirty yeah. coal power, for example, your, your environmental impact isn't quite as impressive as you might think it is. Yeah. And mm. also, I mean, what about the smugness factor if you're able to plug in at home when you've got you know solar yeah. on the roof, you're, you're off grid in that sense. Well, oh, that's pretty good. JC, that's the answer to, to the grid issues, actually. I mean, most people agree that if we did a snap change, the grid would collapse, but actually cars will more and more emerge as the answer to that problem. Yes. Once vehicle to grid technology comes into play in Australia and people are using solar panels on their roof, the cars themselves become a grid stabilizing tool. So there are there are mm -hmm. ways around that in the future. Great point. Great point. All right. That is brilliant. And look, with that, we've reached the finish line. That's it. So I want to say uh, thank you, Tung. Thank you, everyone. And thank you, Chesto. Thank you, JC. Thanks, everyone. And, and thanks most of all to our listeners and viewers uh, and to our production multitasker, Mr. Brett Sullivan. Thank you, Brett. Uh, and again, as a tip of the hat to Mr. Pritchard, he's wearing a T-shirt saying, if you don't like me, you should get tested. One of the first symptoms of COVID is no taste. <laughs> <laughs> um, jump into the conversation cars guides on facebook and instagram or email us at comments at carsguide.com.au listeners please take a moment to rate and review the show five is the preferred number of stars and viewers if you're watching on youtube make sure to subscribe to the cars guide channel so you can stay on top of all our latest content but before we go look i belong to a few petrol head groups on social media and there was a worrying post on one of my favorites earlier in the week it said Heads up, guys, there are some real weirdos in this group. Someone messaged me asking to meet up in the local park for a naked satanic ritual, and they didn't even show. <laughs> oh, my God.